Hello and a very warm welcome to everybody. I am Shrija Agrawal and you are watching the Dispatch of Mint CX Conversations. Before we deep dive into this very meaningful panel, let's do some context setting of the same. Now more than ever, the dynamic landscape of evolving customer experiences is integral for enterprises. Those that provide more customized and specialized experiences see results in the form of augmented customer satisfaction, significantly growing their bottom line. Many find that gradually traditional marketing channels are becoming less effective or even stagnant when it comes to sustaining customer expectations. This forces organizations to either invest in expensive marketing initiatives or figure out new ways to engage with their consumers. In the last year, for instance, when a research report by Zendesk, there was 110% increase in consumers who identified social messaging as a preferred channel to resolve customer services issues. Business messaging allows for improved experience at scale and provides efficient communication with customers and preferred channels to deliver a robust customer experience and help consumers interact with companies for pre and post sales activities. WhatsApp, for instance, has quickly emerged to become the go-to global application for over 2 billion active customers. This consumer-preferred platform is now readily adopted by businesses to scale the communication and reach customers with ease. Three things consumers want clearly are convenience, service, and speed. Social messaging offers all of the three, facilitating a human touch at a level of accessibility that cuts out the long wait times and the expense of helplines. With the traction it's getting, business messaging platforms may become actually the primary communication channel to connect with existing and prospective customers. What really are the brass tacks in today's omni-channel world when it comes to consumer expectations? With this omni-channel revolution in the spotlight, how can brands be enabled to supercharge customer experience? To break it all down, please help me welcome Arun Chinnachami, Chief Technology Officer, Bright Champs Hyderabad, Gaurav Sharma, Chief Customer Officer and Chief Strategy Officer at Falanko Bangaluru, Sunil Kumar, CTO of Ship Rocket Delhi, Anil Kabra, Vice President, Enterprise Sales, Express Peace Mumbai, Nithi Agrawal, Director, Customer Experience, Supi Delhi, and Peru Shred, who joins us from the Bay Area, where it is 1 a.m. Uh, Baruchi, the CEO of Gapsha, Baru, hello. And I hope it's not very taxing for you. But I think let's just deep dive into this meaningful conversation. And let's really begin the conversation before we understand the topic about customer experience really is that the wave of digitization that we have seen in India is irreversible. We saw digital transformation across the board. A lot of traditional companies went for digital transformation. I do think that there's so much to discuss on the customer experience side. But let's really try to understand that majority of organizations really agree that customer experience innovation, the CX innovation, is required to protect the businesses from competitors. CX is now on every CEO's agenda, but do organizations truly understand their customer expectations? What is the amount of work that they have done to understand the customer expectations? Maybe I'll begin with Hunidhi, just beginning with a female speaker here, and then get on to other panelists. Yes. Uh, so yes, uh, what I will say is that customer experience, uh, you know, I've been doing customer experience since more than 19 years. So it is one of the most important aspects that uh, recently uh, people have, uh, you know, started to uh, focus more in. And uh, I would say that uh, it's very important uh, today to make it more personalized uh, for all the customers who are coming to us because that's what changes the game. Today, people are, uh, you know, they want to spend money if they're getting the right kind of services and they don't uh, mind paying extra if they're getting the right services. Thanks for that, Nidhi. Anil, I want to sort of get on to you from an Express Bees perspective. And uh, before we got into the discussion, we were having this little chat around unicorn status and reaching the unicorn mark, really. I want to understand from you that what is the amount of time and energy that you have spent understanding customer expectations? What is the level of effort that goes behind your organization to understand this? And how ongoing is the process throughout the year? Anil, you're on mute. Hi. Th thanks for that. 
and uh, thanks for welcoming on this. Uh, to your question, you know, I mean, my specifically in my case, let's say my career, it has all been about customer experience where you're offering a product or a service, service in my case, say, uh, but it is all about customer experience. Uh, customer experience in terms of actual deliverable, customer experience in terms of what they take as a value add maybe, and then the word of mouth. Uh, it's, of course, a very evolving and dynamic market out there. Right? If you're talking about multiple channels, customers are bombarded with, bombarded with a lot of information, etc. Right? Now, within this all gamut and circus, so to say, how do we ensure that the core, which is the customer experience, retains and stays intact? I think that's the essence. Now, Organizations tend to probably overdo a uh, whole lot of communication um, and barrage customers with a lot of information, uh, visibility, etc. And and in the process, let us not lose out on the customer experience. I think all said and done, that stays at the center of success of any organization. Yeah, I understand the importance of customer experience, but my question really was that what are you all doing to understand the customer expectation? Uh, okay. Perhaps uh, yeah. we should hear from Ship Rocket. I mean, how, what do you do to understand customer expe expectations from your organization's perspective? Yes. See, essentially, uh, as we uh, are seeing, the entire world has evolved rapidly in the last few years. So. Today also, uh, you just talked about convenience, service, speed. Uh, Nidhi uh, touched a bit on uh, personalization. So the customer today, I mean, whatever is promised to him or her, uh, the minimum uh, is expected that, okay, the company delivers on that promise. That, that That is the bare minimum. But the customer is looking for a wow experience. So you mentioned, uh, we talked about uh, WhatsApp uh, being uh, used by billions of people. So it is not just a communication mechanism which leads to that wow uh, mechanism. You can have a parallel that you have walked into a store. So the kind of hand holding is done right through the entire purchase and the post purchase thing that, okay, how was the experience? So for instance, let's take a simple example. So for instance, uh, there's a delivery which has happened. We being a, a delivery platform. So a delivery has happened. So how to engage with the customer in terms of as a, a simple thing as taking the delivery feedback, whether or not the order has reached on time, whether or not the goods are in proper shape, whether or not he has liked, what, uh, how will he or she like to rate the seller? So it's the entire cycle, the 360 degree communication of the entire cycle, which leads to the uh, customer experience. Because end of the day, the primary objective of all the businesses is to uh, earn customers trust. So at Shiprocket also, all our workflows, all our engagement mechanisms, mediums, be it SMSs, be it WhatsApp conversations, be it push notifications, or any other touch points, are essentially aimed to win the customer trust. And that is one, uh, keeping him or her updated about the progress. Two, in case something goes wrong or there is some change. So for instance, a simple thing can be you have to reschedule a delivery. What kind of workflows are there? How handholding is being done? So we lay a lot of emphasis on the, uh, those aspects and we try to earn customers trust on that. Gaurav, what about you? We just heard from the CTO of ShipRocket saying that all of it is directed towards gaining the trust of the customer. How was it in your organization? Yeah, so I think uh, it's very well established that understanding customers' expectation is something which is very, very critical to any business as Anil, Sunil, as well as Nidhi have spoken about it. I want to talk about the fact that how do we really uh, go about understanding what our customer is really saying. So, you know, because we're in the business of uh, uh, furniture, which is given as a subscription model. So it's almost, I mean, we take pride in calling ourselves the Netflix of furniture because furniture is a difficult commodity to deal with. There is a last mile angle, which is very operationally heavy. But being a completely online company, we you know work on the apps and website and we don't have experience centers and stores. But for us, we are very well aware of the fact that furniture is possibly amongst the top three most important pieces of equipment or appliance or furniture that sits in our house. Uh, it's very critical. We take our product 
inside the customer's house. It's not a door delivery, right? So we enter customers' bedrooms. We need to understand who are our customers, what are their expectations, and how are we really meeting them. The point is, we started by setting up a design team. So by the way, all the Falenko furniture is designed in-house, which was one of its kind in India because most people tend to buy from the vendors and just sell it off to the customers, right? So, I mean, we may go to Malaysia or Jodhpur and so on, but we have an in-house design team. Now, when it comes to designing anything, be it a you know, platform or a software or a hardware, uh, you need to understand your customer, otherwise your designs don't make sense to them. So we have this process right from the beginning of what is the pain point that we are trying to solve for customers. And then the whole process of customer engagement for us right up till termination. At every touch point, we take feedback. We take something obviously, which has become extremely popular today, but NPS, for example, is super critical for us. We've kept the survey very simple, just score us, rate us, and we ask you, why did you do that? Very simple you know, selection that the customer can do. And if the customer wants to engage, they can give us some free text. Now those verbatims are super powerful for us because we are not getting to interact with them we don't really do this in a mall or in their house. We are collecting this online. We go through each and every sentence that the customer has typed for us. And we take it very, very seriously because then only do we understand where is the noise or praise coming from. And of course, the CSATs of the world and so on. That's sort of well said. And thanks for sort of giving us the how of how you do it. What about you, Arun? And then I will get to Berwood on that one. Yes. Sure. Uh, probably our case is a little bit different um, uh, in the sense that, you know, our customers are primarily the parents, but our users are the kids, right? And then if I look at it, like, you know, from the way the question is about, like, you know, how do we, like, you know, get the right expectation, right? So if I overall look at it, it's not only that, like, you know, WhatsApp, like you mentioned, like, you know, we have got, like, you know, uh, so WhatsApp is primarily, if I look at, like, you know, India, Middle East, and even Southeast Asia side, like, you know, if you go to Indonesia, WhatsApp is still good, right? But if I move towards the countries like, let's say, Philippines, Vietnam, where we even have, like, you know, students studying, there, like, you know, the prominence of, let's say, uh, Viber, Facebook Messenger, this thing actually, like, you know, kind of is more prominent there than the WhatsApp itself, right? So in our case, our expectation has always been that, like, you know, we have multiple layers of fallback. Uh, for example, like, you know, today, we want to know that, like, you know, what's the right time to reach out to the parent? What's the right uh, like you know, kind type of communication the parents want to see in their WhatsApp versus email versus let's say like you know push notification right? So WhatsApp is not probably like you know, we have seen uh, we have tested a lot of stuff we have seen the thing like you know what is the uh, parents don't want to see like a you know, lot of messages coming into the WhatsApp because it's more intrusive right? WhatsApp is like you know probably there is a personal messages there is a, a like you know a business messages as well. Where like you know, email is actually it's accepted that like you know you will actually send like you know marketing messages or like you know um, like more of a class summary messages and all this kind of stuff. So there, uh, like you know, what we have done now is that like you know we have segregated all our communications towards like you know what's the type of messages and also like you know what are the different channels we reach out to today. <clears throat> so we cover today like you know approximately seven or eight channels, including Viber, Facebook Messenger emails, uh, SMS, um, um, and WhatsApp, definitely. And then we have got like, you know, push notifications, right? Six, seven of them. So we actually create like, you know, a model of a customer, like, you know, what's their expectation is, what's the kind of messaging they want in different channels. And then we actually try to deliver as per that promise of that, right? Uh, push notification is probably is like, you know, going on with the app guys. And so that's where like, you know, Probably the modeling works like that. In our case, like you know, we have desktop notification, which is sure. specifically towards the kids, right? Yep. Thanks for that. Uh, Bill, I, I would like to come to you now, and it's a good time to bring you in. You've heard from a variety of companies and leadership here as to how they go around understanding their customer expectation and how their device or strategy bases that. A lot of these words that they used are something which we have used, which we have sort of learned before. They said it is important. The idea is to establish trust, not perhaps more important, a synthetic environment. Third, they also spoke about the how of it. Nidhi also spoke about the fact that it's critical now and customers don't 
don't mind paying extra for this. I want to understand from you, and I think it's a good idea to break it down further, the customer expectation, that who is the post-COVID customer? Is the post-COVID customer different from a pre-COVID customer? Are his expectations different? Number one, from, a, from, from an organization like SMS Kapsha, which is this big organization, Unicorn, and the business of providing solutioning of customer experience, it's good to hear from you now. That is the first one. And second, do you agree with what is the approach and strategy employed by all these five companies right here, which you heard right now? Yes. Sure. I think, uh, no, we work with, you know, we obviously enable customer engagement for lots and lots of companies across messaging and now also across voice uh, because Gupshap recently acquired a company called Nolarity, which is the largest voice platform in India as well. Um, And I think when you think about the customer experience, I mean, some of the speakers spoke already, but, you know, it makes sense to analyze all the touch points uh, to see, you know, exactly what the customer experience is, what are they doing and how, right? And there's many different factors. Some speakers have already touched on it. I think the most important factor, if I may suggest, uh, is is really the, the channel of communication, right? Because what uh, that almost becomes the first and primary uh, sort of aspect that determines whether the engagement works at all or works successfully and in a rich way, right? And traditionally, if you think about it, in the in the early days, most people would have said, "Oh, you build a website. That's how you engage with customers, or you set up a mobile app, right? That's a that's a natural thing to do, or maybe set up a call center." Uh, but what we have seen, right? So in the Western markets, I mean, I'm based here in the U.S. Call centers work; they work well, right? Websites work. Everybody, you know, they're mostly on desktop, laptops, and so on. Even apps work because people are very comfortable, high bandwidth, large devices. It makes sense to down. It's seventy percent iPhone, and so on. But when you come to emerging markets, right, like India or LATAM or Southeast Asia and so on, we find that none of these other factors work, right? Call centers are not that common. Email is not a well-established consumer habit. Websites don't render well on feature uh, on smartphones because everybody leapfrogs straight to smartphone, right? The web habit was never quite there. And even mobile apps, right? There are, there are millions of apps, but most of us, you know, have maybe what, 100 or 200 apps on our device. So, you know, it becomes a challenge for businesses to use all these other channels. And ultimately, the channel that works really well is, is to use the app that they already have on their device, which is the messaging app, uh, which is not just present already, but also it's the most intensely and heavily used app, 50 times a day, 100 times a day. So, so those messages get read, people engage with it, and the conversion rate is, is huge, right? The open rate, the read rate, and the interaction rate. Then the other cool thing that's happening is messaging platforms are getting richer and richer, right? So uh, previously, I mean, the, the rich experiences that you can deliver through websites and apps are now entirely possible through a messaging experience. So for example, WhatsApp has enabled, you know, complete commerce capabilities. You can have catalog payment, you know, you can have uh, tracking, lead gen and so on. And not just uh, not just WhatsApp, but like Arun mentioned, you know, other channels as well, right? Facebook Messenger, uh, RCS, uh, even Gupshap has launched a channel called GIP and, and so on. So each of these are different variations that enable um, sort of these conversational experiences, right? So what happens is, uh, you know, you you don't need, ha- you, you, this easily bypasses the download barrier, right? Most usually when a new startup or a new company or even an established company comes in, we talk to some of the largest banks, you think people care about their money, but more than half their customers don't download their app. Right, they they come into the branch, they call the call center, and so on. But but WhatsApp messages or even SMS messages get read very quickly, and so on. So I think this choice of channel is an important thing. And then within that channel, because it drives that convenience, right? No download, quick, instant. It drives speed because people respond. You can get things done. I'll give you maybe one small example, right? Traditionally, when say bill pay reminders, right? There's a lot of messages, SMS messages that cable companies and others send out saying, hey, your bill is due. And the traditional customer experience is, okay, you get a message, you get a reminder. Now, maybe if you're in a meeting, you'll say, okay, I'll look at it later. Then later in the day, you again, look at that message, you open up the payment app, you find the merchant, find put the amount and make the payment. But we enable something called one-click bill pay, which is there's a message along with the link and you just press on it, it and literally it's one click bill pay we call it because all you have to do after that is authorize and the payment is made and if you can reduce those you know maybe seven or eight clicks down to one click and you do it instantly suddenly the 
collection rate is higher, the response rate is higher, and so on. Right? Then just a very small example of sort of removing these friction points that really accelerates it. So anyway, the choice of channel, the the rich experiences within that channel, and and this has been in my mind sort of the biggest transformation in CX in emerging markets and uh, that that we are seeing a lot and you know I can talk more about it but let me just pause there for now thanks for that Beru. that was pretty insightful you spoke about the choice of the channels essentially medium is the message so what do you think really is the fact that whatsapp has gained this traction as the preferred go-to messaging platform of course on the personal side we have seen the kind of pickup or stock it about it as a business messaging platform. Why do you think it really has snowballed the way it has when it comes to providing customer support? That stickiness that has been able to establish. And then I look down to other panelists also as to how they are employing WhatsApp in their business. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, like I said, uh, almost every user in India and most emerging markets, right? It's a little different, like you said, in Philippines and Vietnam, maybe but Indonesia, certainly Brazil, Mexico, and so on, Africa as well, WhatsApp is very popular, right? So the fact that it's there and the fact that the user has to do nothing else, you know, they don't have to go download an app. Uh, they don't have to set up, install anything like that. Uh, also in WhatsApp, the identity is clearly in there because automatically the merchant gets the number of the users. You don't have to ask them, hey, what's your login password? What's your phone number? Do an OTP. All of that is already in there, right? So it's easy to get started. Uh, and then because uh, they have some rich, WhatsApp has some rich capabilities. And then on top of it, Gupshop has sort of enabled a platform that, that builds integration with maybe the logistics system, the inventory management system, the any backend transaction processing system and whatever, or, or the CRM tools and so on, right? So now you could still run or define these campaigns in in salesforce or hubspot or maybe you know on shopify and and woocommerce and so on right whatever the tools are all those systems can then be integrated to deliver this experience through whatsapp right so like i said it's enormously convenient to the user there's no extra steps or actions or clicks that they have to do uh, and then if you layer on the rich uh, interaction uh, you know, it really just makes it easy. And if you just step back at a higher level, if you think about how humans interact, right? You want to do something, you have a conversation. You, you know, you walk into a shop and the best experience is, you know, there's, there's a personal shopkeeper that knows you, understands you, you say, do you have this? Do you have that? You know, uh, what do you the think? The conversation is bit is what just gets you interested. Yes, absolutely. You know, yes. You know since we were toddlers, you yes. know, humans know how to speak. And it's the most natural, intuitive, easy, convenient thing to do. No training required, works in any language, you know, not mm -hmm. technical at all. And also particularly works on a small screen. So, you know, the whole idea, the vision is consumers should be able to chat with businesses as easily as chatting with friends or family. And that's something everyone knows, right? So I think if you can reach that bar, then then the business has an opportunity to be a, a trusted friend, a trusted advisor, a trusted guide. Uh, it can provide reviews, can provide options, can provide choices, can facilitate maybe cross-sell, upsell, you know, all of that, uh, tracking and, and so on. There's so much room for building a very trusted, personalized, I think like Nidhi was saying earlier, a, a you know, trusted, personalized relationship. So. So I think it just sort of opens up uh, so many possibilities that is simply not possible to do through a web a website or an app, right? And maybe the last note I'll leave you on is, you know, like traditionally websites and apps, they force humans to behave like computers, but a conversation <laughs> experience forces computers to behave like humans, right? Yes. And that just takes the customer experience level to a whole new level. Okay, Anil, I would like to sort of bring you in from an Express Beats perspective at a, at a huge scale level. How do you sort of establish that conversation to sort of what Beirut just laid out that Shreeja is ultimately it's that most natural human instinct not to behave in a very robotic fashion or computer like fashion, but get that customer experience embedded through the conversation. You like that. I mean, it's a very offline experience of conversation and you want that on the screen. Have you been able to establish that trust in a synthetic environment, virtual environment, now all that shopping is happening through a computer screen? 
and what role has whatsapp really played in supercharging that customer experience for you yeah right thanks i think berul was pretty elaborate and you know the role of whatsapp as a channel i think it's one of the single most powerful channel to be able to reach a largest audience right largest customer base and uh, hence whatsapp has become a formal mode of communication as well right for updates for feedback for reviews uh, we at express bees you know looking at the sheer quantum of customers that we touch base on a daily basis right it becomes very critical that we use and adopt a channel which is accessible to them right and uh, and and the information data assessment etc npa can flow back to us in our system and hence whatsapp becomes very critical uh, there are multiple things that are done one of course is the traditional good old customer uh, <clears throat> calling human uh, you know listening to the human voice but then there are also chatbots that we introduced because not everybody really has a patience for somebody to respond there's a very quick response that i need right and i just need it instantly right my chatbot can do that immediately for me right set of steady questions steady answers yes no possible not possible etc etc but then when it goes beyond that i want a more deeper conversations additional information then this directs you to the right channel where probably you are hearing a human voice right or ivrs which helps you take it further right? so so there are options which are open which allow us to touch base with customer right and then they get to pick and choose depending on what they need i am in a rush i just need a simple yes or no i get it from chatbot right but otherwise i have other options of communicating with customers npa is one which is touched upon right npa is is uh, i think very critical uh, whatsapp is used extensively for npa because everybody accesses it the moment it is delivered you see a delivery notification and a link within that where you seek permission of customer allow them to take npa right which is a quick few seconds maybe a minute under a minute but that feedback comes back in helps us to improvise within ourselves uh, what more can be done to listen to customers correct and also analyze the trend right of in which direction customer is wanting to go improvements etc etc yeah so but tell me one thing all of you company the digital companies right and all of you saw your business see a huge uptick during the covid 19 pandemic that we saw now this uh, this acceptance of new normal coming in but if most of you are using this mother platform whatsapp for your customer problems and customer experience enhancement so what is the differentiation then how do you differentiate the customer experience from one company to another if ultimately everybody is using these large mother platforms so how do you distinguish customer experience so you you asked you know while ago what is the new customer like post covid right the new customer in my view is a virtual customer is a more virtual customer right mm. or post covid we are all uh, we all we all got so hooked on to uh, the virtual way of doing business the virtual way of ordering things the virtual way of connecting communicating with others etc having said that whatsapp is just one of the channels since it is all pervasive accessible to everybody it is it is a non ignorable channel having said that as an organization express bees in logistics delivery end to end supply chain right and yet we claim ourselves to be one of the strongest tech organizations right because without that uh, building the mass and the volume gets pretty difficult right okay so uh, let's well, let's have this conversation the first principles based i'm going to use sunir three things i think just taking from what beirut's conversation was that shija the communication channel is the answer the message is the answer so if you were to give me the break up in your organization from ship rockets perspective what channels do you use and what really is a break up like 70% whatsapp 20% facebook 10% is ivr is call center still relevant or is it still relevant next 5 years is the question we'll have in towards the post this conversation give me the break up of what you use for what and how much yeah so they do essentially uh, have the on a very uh, pertinent point regarding the communication channel if i take a step back and uh, look at the industry per se so the industry has over a period of time always build business processes along those channels which the public has used 
so we 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 the uh, uh, business processes on along uh, calls ivr based uh, conversational smss or now whatsapp what we we are discussing so what wa whatsapp is so prevalent because number one it has formed a habit uh, within the masses so and why it has formed a habit because it interacts with multiple parties in a manner not as a tool but as a conversational thing so it for instance if both uh, two parties are talking it's like that businesses can mimic or uh, as someone uh, pointed out uh, a hand holding when uh, one comes into a shop so coming back to the query uh, uh, which you raised so uh, i'll give you some certain stats today uh, our business is also uh, seeing huge adoption in terms of whatsapp usage so not just in terms of informational uh, push which we used to do through smss and push notifications emails and status updates and other stuff but in terms of real conversions so what we are seeing for example a big decent uh, uptake in terms of abandoned cart conversions so for instance, hmm. for instance uh, uh, customer has uh, items like uh, lying in the cart and it has abandoned the cart so Conversational nudges, promotions, and other things. Uh, it, it's a, as high as 17 to 18 percent uh, is the conversion rate. A lot of uh, uptake which we are seeing in the conversion of uh, our uh, COD orders or cash on delivery orders to prepaid orders. And because that again simplifies the kind of trust uh, which uh, the businesses have uh, are able to gain from the customers. Uh, from that perspective so, yes. so number one is so number one is whatsapp for you what would be what would the number two be yes so, so essentially call center is still there sms's old SS, uh, school of thought sms's do uh, act so for instance if you have to just push a tracking information proactively that okay the packet is now out for delivery just a simple push person goes it it has a sweet little uh, link which uh, one can click it, he or she clicks on it, he sees the entire uh, journey of the dashboard uh, in terms of a well-designed uh, landing page where he can uh, do NPS and all those uh, things, uh, rescheduled delivery, whatever things can be done. And a lot of people are using it also. So, so basically yeah. WhatsApp, IVR and SMS, these are three primary channels and, for you in your customer and, experience and, journey. And also, uh, just one uh, second to build on top of it, in case a conversion is needed or a user action is needed, WhatsApp plays a much better role as compared to when you have to just push the information. So there, uh, IVR and uh, uh, SMS uh, do the job also. But in terms uh, of uh, places where you have to get something converted to a new thing, so there WhatsApp plays a very pivotal role and it's gaining traction a lot. Okay, Nidhi, I come to you. Uh, I got Sunil's first three sort of on the conversion efficiency rate for him. Absolutely, it's WhatsApp, but the conversion rates are also high, not necessarily only a push notification. When it comes to logistics and delivery management, he's saying it's SMS and, of course, call center for price. So these are his three topics. What about you, Nidhi? Uh, so for me, uh, it becomes a little different because currently I'm in the real money gaming industry. Uh, basically, we can't use WhatsApp and officially, uh, so it does, uh, you know, bring us with challenges because what happens is that we can only either we use uh, the in-app messages that we have or live chat uh, that the customer can uh, start with us. Uh, otherwise, WhatsApp, yes, in my uh, last organizations, I would like uh, say that it's easy it's uh, easy reachability quick resolutions and uh, the the best part about whatsapp is that you can initiate conversations whenever required so if in case there's an email you've received or uh, you've received a call and now you need more information it's the most convenient way is just uh, send a whatsapp to the customer and the information will be there with you okay what about you arun so um so that's on one of the advantages that whatsapp is now everywhere like you guys said uh, I, like everybody said and everybody's online right uh that's why like, you know it used to be a problem if you think of like you know five years back uh because before the pre geo era in india people are not online so the reachability in the whatsapp used to be like you know uh not very good right that's why like you know, sms was there but now one of the thing is like you know now everybody's online the reachability is definitely there 
uh, one of the question which you asked like you know, if everybody is actually uh, like you know, sending in whatsapp where you can differentiate right but that i think with time my i sense it like you now it will become a platform it's like any other email or sms right where everybody is starting to use the platform your differentiation factor is more towards like you know the information which you are sending the messages which you are sending than like you know the platform itself if you think of like you know a couple of years back whatsapp used to be like you know very limited to very few set of uh, like you know businesses so that, then it's like you know it was a premium feature like you know very few businesses can interact with the customer in whatsapp now it has they have opened up i think with the recent policy change it has even become like you know more easier to actually like you know come into the whatsapp right as more and more marketing messages start coming in probably like you know, it is going to whatsapp as a platform will get commoditized and now what will happen is like you know your differentiation factor is going to be on like you know, what messages what type of communication you are going to send right that is what will actually like you know differentiate between your competitor and you right um that's that as i think like you know that is the case with email or sms today right uh, everybody sends email but like you know you need to be actually like differentiating with the kind of content uh, you were uh, like you know what timing you are doing that like you know if you look at email it's much more evolved i think whatsapp is not yet evolved i think like you know, it is going to get into that place like you know now you will optimize on like you know what time you want to send the message what type of content you want to send now with the quick replies or one click like you know where which said also is like you know those kind of stuff is what like you know now the value add is right um, okay Yep. Yes. Uh, so I think we are spending this time on the WhatsApp conversation. We'll take the conversation further from there. But we'll put the last one on this. I think two questions really. We got the breakup from quite a few as to how they use WhatsApp, really being used on the primary conversion messaging tools. I want to understand from you that really, if everybody in the digital environment is using WhatsApp as the mother platform, how does one differentiate from customer experience from one company to another? That is number one. Is there a fear of WhatsApp fatigue or WhatsApp monetization which can build in? And the second thing I want to ask you, and we'll just sort of build it further on IVR and other messaging platforms. But of course, your quick bit on WhatsApp first. Yes. Well, look, you know. both my mom and my friend send me messages on whatsapp uh, but i don't confuse one for the other right because the content for the messages is very different so i think but it helps that the channel of communication is the same because it's super convenient as a user because it comes in one place and i can i'm always checking because you know i have many other threads there as well so i don't think uh, just because multiple businesses use the same channel means uh, you you know you lose differentiation I think the the differentiation has to be focused on the content, on the personalization, on what message are you sending when to whom, uh, with what context, and for example, you know the fact that in WhatsApp you already know the user identity, you have the transaction history. If you can personalize it, so instead of you know when the customer says, like say in the logistics case, right, where's my package? you know you don't want to be asking which package are you talking about because you already know in the system who's the user what's the last order what's the last package you know what are they talking about and therefore you can say well here's the status of your package right so now now that would be very delightful and i mean it's hard to achieve but if achieve you know can be very convenient and delightful so really you know i think the focus then has to be on that conversational experience right and the and the bar is you know i mean we humans take it for granted but like like say even in this conversation when you ask me a question i have to give a very specific answer i can't say oh here's a book or here's a manual go read that and the answer is somewhere in there right it's not like i can give you an faq uh, to read I, i i have to answer it so in the same way right when a customer says oh do you have a blue shirt well you know you, you need to understand what it or if the user says i'm i'm hungry you know can you send me food well you need to know who that person is what were the last 10 orders what do they normally eat when they're hungry on a friday evening and therefore you can send the same thing so i think the opportunity is immense right to to differentiate and maybe the other thing i'll add is uh, the, the the surprising thing in in engaging users and giving a delightful experience is actually less is more meaning hmm. the, the fewer yeah. clicks the fewer steps the fewer time that the user has to spend with you to accomplish a certain task uh the better it is right so the idea is not to engage them so much that you keep them busy chatting to you all the time no it's sort of like look i wanted to make that payment one click you're done move on move on with the rest of your life right go to the other message thread and do what you want to do hang out chat with your real friends as opposed to paying bills and 
you know, following up on things and so on. So I think there's a lot of room to, you know, uh, what's what's happening is uh, platforms always have sort of network effects, meaning more businesses use the same platform than consumers use expect to use it. And therefore, every, everything will happen on that. But but within that same platform, there is enormous, enormous room to add value, to customize, to personalize, to differentiate, you know, and, and make a delightful experience. Okay, Gaurav, I would like to sort of come to you now and just taking it further from what Sutu Beru just outlined in terms of differentiation, personalization, content really defining the uh, the contours of the conversation. Also with the fact that not over barraging the consumer with so much information, it's really about making it super quick, super convenient and super easy. So when you talk about this customer journey, end to end how do you draft that from a Falenco perspective by say sending regular alerts updates on your products and services because you began the conversation saying that we are in the subscription industry for furniture netflix of furniture like to call yourself so how do you manage to do that in a virtual environment end-to-end customer journey yes yeah so i think for us the context is very very critical um, the you know the push uh, you just mentioned about whatsapp getting crowded. I mean, it's, it's just like what Facebook was a couple of years ago. Um, WhatsApp today grabs a lot of attention from the customers because they are using it for their personal as well as to pursue their passions. <clears throat> so whenever a push notification comes, people just jump on it and click. But what is very critical is uh, to understand that anyways, this space has become very crowded because even if you look at the apps, or the desktop, uh, you know, websites which are pushing notifications on apps. Uh, there are a whole lot of apps which want to do that all through the day, through the night. Uh, what is very critical is to have the context of the customer to make sure you get the time of the day right, to make sure you get some, I would say, a pinch of humor somewhere. If you want to just send a, uh, you know, non-contextual message saying that, hey, listen, I want you to do something uh, on our app then the attraction will happen only if you make it attractive, right? I mean, your, your message has to have some thing to grab that eyeball. Otherwise, what we have realized is customers have stopped looking at SMSs altogether. I mean, when we tell them, listen, we sent you a message, they're like, do you think I read SMSs? Um, but having said that, uh, as you said, in terms of the journey of the customer, that's why the context is very important because a customer who's come to us for, say, termination, so we have a full-fledged retention mechanism in our company, right? So if I unsubscribe from Netflix, nobody calls me and says, hey, listen, you can check out this new movie which is releasing next week. But we do that. We call them, we tell them, listen, you've been using this. Uh, why don't you go for something else? We give them upsell options. We give them a whole lot of things which customers can take from us based on their journey with us. Now, that is very, very critical. So the platform really doesn't matter. The context matters and the way we communicate that has to attract the right kind of attention so we do that depending on the stage of the customer's subscription okay i think it's critical that we spend sort of another five minutes on differentiation with the competitor how many of you keep an eye on how your competitor is communicating with the customer and how you escalate that back into your product i'm sure does that all so how does the content team, the community team, the product marketing team, all of you sit together. And what is the culture of customer experience in your organization? Give me some insight into that. Uh, perhaps I can begin with you, Anil, from an ExpressBee's perspective. Uh, so two questions really on what is the culture of customer experience at your organization? How do teams talk to each other? Give me the how of it. How do you operationalize it? And second, keeping an eye on your competitor, the next big competitor, how is he or she looking at customer experience? And do you escalate that back into your product too? Yes. Yeah, so right. On the first part, I think uh, the customer experience, which is which is bought in internally with an organization, uh, uh, it is it is very important that the products, the departments within the organization are talking to each other. The information flows smoothly, so that as an organization we appear as one to customer, right? 
uh, and hence a communication channel in the back end which says this is what is a feedback from a customer for a certain thing which goes to the right channel and then it gets addressed i think that's the that's very essential having multiple products having multiple services etc sometimes you just get lost in the data customer gets lost not knowing whom to approach etc so i think that's one of the most critical part and a well oiled back end communication channel internally as well and then it goes to customer as well that's one part second which is about you know what do you what do we do with competition well <laughs> we, we always try to stay ahead of that but uh, more specifically as what you said i think the experience everything that we are talking about product or service is a very relative term right um, and the, in the past we mentioned kirana we mentioned you know the traditional brick and mortar where we walk in bring in our groceries today we are talking about 10 minutes delivery so it's all about relative right correct if customer is happy with it somebody else needs to do something very similar and i'd be lying if i say that we don't keep an eye on competition we of mm. course keep an eye on competition right now this is basically another tool or a medium to know is customer delighted with certain things which somebody else is doing correct and then there could be some learning on it there could be some improvisation etc and it is it is in a practical way sometimes incorporated uh, and hence you know keep, keep knowing what is happening it is more about competition intelligence rather than you know trying to imitate them correct so there are new innovations which happen and then how do you differentiate how do you stay ahead of it i think these are the parameters in which it is utilized properly sometimes you learn you realize that you don't want to do what somebody else has done correct i'm not getting into specific details but the whole message or the sense that you take out of this competition intelligence is to know that what is the right thing to do what others are doing are you up to it and how ahead you are in the game Okay, Sunil, I would like to sort of get you in. I think uh, Anil sort of just outlined, especially for his industry, for instance, because the pace of innovation and customer experience fulfillment is just so fast. Look at how this entire e-commerce industry has evolved. Now we're talking about ten-minute delivery, and everybody's having to keep up with it. So, from your perspective, I want to understand from you. All of us spoke about the good part. Should you let's go personalized? Messaging is important. Customer experience, building trust, the importance of customer experience, adopting an omni-channel strategies, teams within the organization talking to each other, the power of WhatsApp conversion. But give me the challenges. What are the two key challenges that you are facing in your customer experience journey at your organization? See, essentially, whatever we have uh, discussed, all the panelists have uh, have on uh, very pertinent points. That uh, the more you contextualize and uh, the more you personalize uh, with the customer, the greater the experience is. And uh, as the uh, personalization increases, it clearly signifies signifies that you you are having. more and more data points about the customer be it the shopping habits be it the current order be, be it the order sizes preferences anything depending on the industry you are so that means you are collecting lot and lot of data about the consumer so the biggest uh, uh, challenge which comes is essentially how do you deal with the uh, security of that particular data because end of the day the environment uh, how we are dealing with it is not just whatsapp on one side you have the, these merchant platforms there are communication channels there are your in, uh, internal processes there are your internal workflows and uh, data mining algorithms and other stuff you have to keep that information safe and secure across touch points so uh, uh, anil is here uh, i mean being from express fees uh, you have to share the pii or the information about the customer to all, all the channels so that uh, the actual delivery happens so security is one of the biggest channel challenges what we face and uh, because the more data you capture the more contextualized you do uh, that that becomes uh, more challenging the second aspect of it is uh, how you ensure that the contextualization which you are putting in place is relevant because it's very easy as a marketer or as a owner of the platform to go overboard so again if you go back uh, to your uh, traditional uh, shopping days where you step into a store so there are two type of uh, store managers or uh, customer uh, assistants uh, who one whom you like who help you make the purchase 
others who just tend to go overboard in their zeal. So that, that is a very thin line, which as businesses, we have to be uh, absolutely sure that we do not cross. And we ensure that uh, that thing is maintained in a secure fashion, because once uh, something related to security uh, is compromised, the customer tr trust is broken and shaken. So these okay. are the two challenges. Okay. What about you, Gaurav? In terms of the challenges in your customer experience journey, what would that really be? The challenges for us, uh, you know, the point is uh, we all take pride in calling ourselves a tech company, but finally the product is furniture and the last mile is very, very critical. So for customer experience, it finally comes down to that. How well do you handle it? Um, in terms of uh, if you look at uh, messaging and keeping an eye on how people are doing it, I think our competitors are not uh, like to like furniture companies. Actually, it's all the apps that are sitting in your phone. And if somebody is using humor a lot better than me, I get insecure. Okay, So our content team, our product team, our marketing team, they keep getting messages from all of us in our internal Slack channels that we need to up the game, we need to do something more. And you know, for us, for our TG, obviously what is also important is as important as a Christmas or a Diwali, Halloween and Valentine's Day are equally important. So we try and we try to you know personify our furniture, make it an integral part of somebody's life, um, and then talk around that uh, to our customers. So for us, it's obviously challenging because there was a time when customers came and told us through the NPS that you know you guys send a lot of communication. Mm. So, <laughs> So for us, that was an eye opener and we had to literally go down and say each and every communication that is being sent has to be meaningful for the customer. Otherwise, it's not happening. So that's big sort of learning for you to tone down the volume yeah. of the conversation, perhaps make it more contextual, personalized, like you said, add more humor to it. So the outsized importance to your content and community team, which also becomes very important customer experience journey. Also, Beirut's point was also that, that you can't barrage them with so much information, information overload. What about you, Nidhi? Challenges in the customer experience journey, yes. I think uh, uh, being in real money gaming, uh, one of them is like uh, meeting the expectations throughout. Uh, and finding innovative ways uh, to continuously engage them on your platform. These are the main two challenges that we get because if, uh, you know, uh, we have a game of Ludo, so the uh, customer can play Ludo on our platform or the other platforms as well. Now, how to keep him engaged, how to keep, uh, keep giving him that wow customer experience and how to, uh, you know, create new innovative ways so that, you know, he can continue visiting our platform and keep playing Ludo uh, with us. So okay. these are the two things I will say. Okay, what about you, Arun? Um, coming, like, you know, I kind of, like, you know, agree with uh, Gaurav, right? Like, you know, right now, it's not like, you know, we are actually competing with other edtech firms. We are actually, like, you know, competing with every other marketing message which is actually come, going to that same customer, right? So <clears throat> everybody's connected now, like, you know, all of us are fighting to get that, like, you know, small slice of time from the customer to actually give it to the business itself. Right. So, uh, we uh, probably take like a you know, very uh, data driven pragmatic approach in our case, like, you know, we do a lot of AB testing across like, you know, our content messages, what is working, be it in WhatsApp, SMS, email, and everywhere else. That's like, you know, we try to optimize the absolute number of like, you know, whatsoever, um, uh, like, you know, what's our engagement rate is, right? For example, even when we try to, we are trying to build a chatbot for, let's say, class, class cancellations or information kind of stuff. That also, we want to know that, you know, what what is that, like, you know, customer wants to have? Is it like, you know, should I actually just go and, like, you know, give them options? Or should I actually, like, you know, capture the data on what the customer wants and then, like, you know, order the request based on that, right? So we have a, a like, you know, we have built up a whole layer of AB frameworks especially for communication, WhatsApp, emails, and SMS, that's probably is like, you know, how we try to optimize what the, exactly what the customer want, when they want it, and which channel they want it as well. Right. So, Berud, now I come to you finally. If you were to tell me the key problems, what are the key steps where perhaps the leaders get it wrong when it comes to customer experience, which you have seen across a swath of companies that you cater to? Now you've also acquired Nolarity, so you're sort of right there when it comes to customer experience. Uh, so key and perhaps commonly overlooked mistakes 
which is done by the leadership when they talk about customer experience. And perhaps two, if I were to ask you, you can't give me a larger playbook because now we have running short of time, but two key essential areas when it comes to playbook, if somebody were to be starting out in the post COVID world or transformed in the post COVID world digitally to look at customer experience. I think uh, maybe the first uh, big mistake is to make uh, sort of perfect the enemy of good, right? Meaning sometimes people sort of say, oh, I want to design the perfect customer experience. And until I design that, I'm not going to get started. And uh, instead, if you just start with a good enough solution to begin with, but listen carefully and, and, you know, uh, like Arun was saying, maybe uh, do A-B testing, do experimentation, iteration, listen to the customer and so on, they tell you what they want to do, right? So so the, the important thing is to just to get started because this whole new capability of conversational experiences of, of the messaging channel, right? Being available to do these transactions, it's, it's a new thing and anything that's new, you know, you got to learn, you have to experiment, you got to figure it out. And what I'm saying is the best way to figure it out is, is by doing it. And even if you start with sort of an imperfect solution, uh, but, you know, maybe you do a beta launch, you try it with a few users and so on, but in the process of using it with your own customers, right, they, they, they learn, they develop and so on, because I think this gets very, very advanced quickly, right? The simple thing is notifications, and then there are some interactions, and then there's commerce and transactions, but later on it can be AI, right, and personalization, and a, and a lot of that needs data and training, but to generate that data, you have to put it in front of the consumers, and you have to see what the breakpoints are and put it out there. So anyway, I think that's sort of uh, you know the, the the one big thing. And then the other really is I think uh, you know allocation of resources and energy. I mean I think today if I still look at most let's say tech companies, unicorns, and so on, they'll probably spend a lot more energy optimizing the web and the app experience versus the messaging experience, right? And when the user willingness to adopt and consume is far higher on the messaging side than there is a willingness to download an app or to log on to a website and do things as well, right? So I think uh, it's it sort of, if you if you think about, you know, because an app looks good, it, maybe it's a vanity thing, people, you know, it, it's sort of your brand, everything is visible. And like I was saying earlier, if you if you think of customer experience as, the least number of steps to accomplish a certain task, as opposed to the most, you know, barraging of information and data and brand and visual stuff that you can do on the consumer. I think if you've used the right definition, then you might say, oh, okay, if it's in, if it's in WhatsApp and I send them a message with a single click that they were able to reschedule the delivery or make the payment, uh, you know, and so on, then less is more, right? So I think really, thinking of this as a elevating it to a first class user experience medium and and i think if they do that right so so really understand the significance of this and to get started uh, i think those are sort of the two things that if if leaders uh, customer experience leaders focus on i think then then a lot of the answers are kind of obvious in the doing you'll you'll learn you'll observe and i'll figure it out I see a lot of heads being nodded right now. So I think a lot of people are in consensus with you, what you just outlined, Beirut. I think it's a pretty meaningful insight to also that less is more and to not fear from experimenting and to not be in that pursuit of having that perfect customer journey because it's always a process. I think it's time for some quick rapid fire. I do think we don't have much time, but I think we can take some one or two fun questions also. I'll start with you, Anil. Uh, if you were to give me the most overrated unicorn according to you, what would that be? Yes, Anil, give me one answer. If you were to name the most overrated unicorn right now in India, what would that be? <laughs> why, why do you want me to make enemies anywhere, right? <laughs> well, well, I, I, I rather would say, you know, any unicorn which is not looking at it just as a milestone to reach their fast, but honestly is on a strong footing is important very honestly i think that is very critical you could take a little longer than others it's not a time race and as you know garut said less is more etc so focusing on your core values so any unicorn which is not on this could be overrated simple as that in fact let me make it easy let me make it easy for everyone i think the concept of unicorn itself is overrated in the sense that 
to think that a, a unicorn valuation means you're successful is a recipe exactly. for disaster. You know, it, it what just success means your customers being happy with you, your business and business model working well, and then over time, you know, good things will happen. Uh, the concept of unicorn in and itself, you know, is highly overrated. Perfect. The day you move, you answer it without naming it. <laughs> And I think we should just okay. Let me flip the question. One unicorn which you admire the most? Well, I admire Express Bees, honestly. <laughs> Not your own company. <laughs> Not your own company. Okay, Sunil, I'll come to you now. A surprising customer insight that you learned during the pandemic. Quick answer. Two sentences max. Yeah. So customers are uh, uh, more eager and. Uh, can adopt to tech solutions more freely than we can imagine for. So people uh, are more adaptable than what we think in uptaking new channels, new conversations, new solutions. Okay. Uh, Gaurav, how do you inspire innovation among your employees in one line, if you were to give me? Well, uh, uh, there was a study that I came across. There were 3,500 innovators that were studied by Harvard. Uh, over a period of six years and they said that uh, innovation per se it it doesn't matter in what field innovation per se is only one third genetic and two third is to through skill building and learning this is one point of data i tell everybody joining my company and leaving my company that just makes them feel happy and doable in terms of innovation okay uh what about you nidhi i wanted to ask you that if you were to name one company which is managing customer expectations really well in the last couple of years which you look up to what would that be uh well there are a lot of companies uh if i talk about the banking i'm sorry about that sound that's coming from behind me uh there's some work going on so Yes, I think banking has uh, recently changed the way, you know, uh, they have been managing the customer experience. And apart from that, I will say that the daily apps, you know, that we are using uh, for, uh, you know, our groceries and everything, because that has become our uh, lifeline, uh, I okay. would say, in, the, in this uh, time of pandemic. So. Okay. Okay, Nidhi, you can go on mute, actually. Okay, Arun, uh, uh, the same question for you. A surprising customer insight you learned during the pandemic. What would that be? Okay. Um, probably with respect to the customer experience, right? Uh, so customers are more vocal about what you did not do than like, you know, what you did like, correctly, right? Uh, let's say like, you, know, you made a mistake that they are actually much more vocal and much more uh, like, you know, uh, Abrupt about like you know coming and complaining about it, then like you know all the things which you do right, right. So even if you do like you know ninety nine percent of the time all the right things, and one percent of the time you do that one thing wrong, right. So I guess like you know that's something I felt uh, uh, like you know during this pandemic because being digitalized and everything up. So it is I feel that you know it's very important as a customer experience side. You have to do everything right, whatever you promised for. Right. Okay. Okay, Berud, now you have to be ready for this. Now I'm coming to you. <laughs> if you were to name the most overt unicorn in India, according to you right now, what would that be? And you can't give me that shit a unicorn is over. It. Give me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're, you're trying to get me into trouble or something. Eh? Okay. Uh, the unicorn which you admire the most. You tell me that then. Uh, would would NPCI and the whole UPI miracle count? It's not a yeah, company. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. But, yes. but you know, digital payments has transformed India, if you think about it. And there are many players in the space, of course. There's PhonePay, there's, you know, Google and Paytm and so on. But, but I think it's not the app itself, but the foundation underneath that the India stack and NPCI and what they've done you know, think about it. If it was a company, it would be tens of, it would be a decacorn and so on. It'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. I mean, really the sign of shit of all eyes when it comes to and for what, you, what UPI has really done. Uh, if I were to ask you, you were to name a company which you think is really managing customer expectations really well in the last couple of years, what would that be? I guess, well, I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, companies like Zoho and Freshdesk have done an amazing job, right? They've, now they're more in the B2B space. So, uh, but they are sort of great, you know, SaaS out of built in India for the world. I think they're amazing examples of that. Um, okay. 
yeah okay I guess so. and what do you think is the future of call centers in india oh i think uh, future of call call centers or even messi i think every business every brand will have an alexa like automated chatbot that anybody can call and talk to 24 by 7 available instantly you know and can fix issues and so on so it'll be it speak to them in any language and so on so it'll be a delightful extremely delightful experience you know india has had generally indian business has had a history of bad customer support i think it's going to flip over to exceptional customer support at a low cost thank you thank you everyone for this delightful conversation and really taking down notes on how we can actually have a great customer experience in organizations till time i see you next goodbye and good luck thank you so much for joining in and for your time and energy thanks thank you, thank you. Bye. thank you thank you